What has your experience been like on some of these college campuses? Wild. You were just in L.A., right? Weren't you in New York as well? Yeah, I was at Columbia University last week. I was at USC this week, and then I'll be at University of Washington um, this coming Sunday, Mother's yeah. Day. Uh, are, you, are you just there just strictly to just stand in solidarity with the Israeli community? Yeah, it's Christians united with Jews. Okay. I want them to know that they have got friends in the Christian community who believe, like you said, in their sovereign right to exist. And yeah. by the way, I believe in the sovereign right of Arabs across the Middle East to mm -hmm. exist free from the constraints of radical Islamic extremism. Mm -hmm. You know you, you know who I want to free Gaza from? I want to free Gaza from Hamas mm -hmm. uh, because uh, Hamas is, you know, I mean, don't have to tell you this, but that, you know, de demonic, militant, terroristic faction partnered with Hezbollah, funded by Iran. Yeah. They're a scourge on the face of the planet, you know. Yeah. So this is not just me saying, well, Jewish lives matter more than Palestinian lives. No, 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 th that's not the case. Yeah. Israel, unfortunately, <laughs> in and around them is surrounded by Islamic militants yeah. uh, who are funded by nefarious forces in other nations. And Israel has a right to self-exist. So what I'm seeing on the campus is, uh, you know, people say, is this pro-Israel versus pro-Palestine? And I go, no, mm. it's not. This is not Israel versus Palestine. This is pro-Israel, pro-Jew versus pro-Hamas. Mm -hmm. you know, and you're getting that on the campus. A hundred percent. I was on the phone with the New York Times a few days ago, and they're asking me this question. Why are you um, taking a stand against pro-Palestinian protesters? And I said, uh, I'm too smart for your framing. Mm. I said, I, I, actually, I actually can't even respond to your question because it's intentionally dialect, dialectically framed in a dishonest way. Mm -hmm. I go, this is not pro-Palestinian. Uh, I've got Palestinian friends as well. People go, oh, yeah, you're just saying that. No, I just hosted maybe the most famous Palestinian person who's on the earth today, a man by the name of Masab Youssef mm -hmm. at our church a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, I know him personally. I talked to him this week. Uh, and he's the son of the founder of Hamas, right. who has now come out as a voice against Islamic terrorism. But this is not, you know, anti-pro-Palestine. Uh, uh, this is uh, anti-Hamas. And what you're seeing, of course, on these university campuses uh, is people chanting uh, Intifada now, back to the ovens you go, mm. back to Poland you go, mm. Jews are the scourge of the earth, they're the rats, kill another soldier— Kidnap another person. They're chanting this stuff. Chanting this stuff. And on signs, October 7th was just the beginning. Oof. I mean, this is not like— These are college students. These are college students. And to be fair, they have also been—I don't want to say infiltrated because it's a familiar spirit. They're, they're two peas in a pod. But it's also been joined by radical um, uh, Antifa, yeah, leftists, yeah. Marxists, things of that nature— uh, but that's a, by the way, that's a weird horseshoe. It is a weird political horseshoe. horseshoe. You got the most radical leftist Antifa in line with yeah. militant Muslim ideology that, 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 that hates them. Crazy. Yeah. That's why, you know, and I'm not trying to be like super Christian here. Yeah. That's why, you know, it's spiritual because yeah. it makes no sense. Right, right. It makes no sense. You know, there was a, a, a picture that went viral and I think it was from USC or UCLA, but it was all these like white college girls with blonde hair, like wearing yoga pants and crop tops, bowing down, doing the Muslim noonday prayer Jeez. in solidarity with their Palestinian brothers. And I'm like, y'all get thrown off towers if yeah. there was any left in Gaza. Yeah. Yeah. You would yeah. get thrown off. You know, my favorite is the queers for Palestine. Yeah, that's, that's it. Mess. Makes no sense. What no are you sense. talking about, yeah. bro? Yeah. Israel is the only nation in the Middle East that has laws protecting LGBTQ people. Right. Like, what are you talking about? And so, you know, when I'm on the campuses and I'm hearing these guys and they're waving the signs, uh, this is not like. In the war, we want peace. We want a two-state solution. Israel has offered a two-state solution mm -hmm. like 70 times. Yeah. Uh, the, these are people holding signs that are calling, literally, I kid you not, without hyperbole, they are calling for ethnic genocide of the Jewish people. What's the most famous chant from the pro-Hamas protesters? From the river to the sea, mm -hmm. Palestine will be Palestine free. Will be free. Yeah. What are they calling for? The elimination of the Jewish people. And so, you know, the media and leftists like to frame this almost like it's um, anti-Vietnam War protests. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, come on, Russell. College students been protesting. That's like one of the great American traditions. They're just like pro-peace. Mm -hmm. Really? 
I mean, look at all the videos and photos that have gone viral, plus obviously personal experience being on these campus universities. I mean, when we held our first rally at the University of Washington in November, a month after the terrorist attacks, we held it because the uh, they had a group of students who were holding up signs in the center square of the university with pictures of the hang gliders, mm-hmm. the Hamas hang gliders who went into the music festival and slaughtered all of those people. You think these- Celebrating these people. Do you think... These people grow out of this stuff. Do you think this is kind of like they're going through a, 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 a radical leftist phase in college and then they grow up and they become normal people? Or do you think like this, this, this stuff, this, this, the brainwashing this side, this, this season around is, is going to be more permanent? You know, that is a great question. And I think it comes with some socio political insight. And I think it's generational. Mm. <clears throat> During the Vietnam War protests, during the WTO protests in the Northwest in the year 2000, you know, in past decades, I think, yes. Okay, you look at some of these young adults and you're like, yeah, you're going through your contrarian, Commun- you know, your communist phase, your communist yeah, phase, yeah. your exploration phase, yeah. your personal pronoun phase, your mm-hmm. I can sleep with whoever I want because it's liberation phase. Mm-hmm. Like, I get it. That's kind of what happens in college. And eventually you grow up, you get married, you have kids, you pay taxes and you realize you're a conservative. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that that has kind of been sure. traditionally the trajectory. Yep. However... We are in a world today, especially within Western culture, where you have so many different elements of the culture that have been weaponized within a leftist framework Mm -hmm. that my concern is that what we are seeing today on college campuses is not, you know, let the youth be the youth and Mm -hmm. everybody's kind of a pro-liberal antagonizer while they're in college and they'll grow out of it. Think about how... The West and our systems have been developed and discipled, shaped and formed by ultra leftist ideology from education to media Mm. to culture to entertainment to, I mean, you name the industry. And in many ways, they have been dominated by leftist rhetoric. And so in past generations, people kind of grow out of the prodigal college years into a world that is more well-adjusted. Maybe not right leaning, but at least well adjusted. Sure. You will go from, you know, being a, a far leftist to maybe a moderate. Sure. Maybe a blue dog Democrat, sure. whatever. But you're probably not chanting like uh, Intifada revolution is the true final solution, mm-hmm. like I've heard on university campuses. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think my concern is in our world today, the, 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 the framework has so shifted leftward in its ideological format. Mm-hmm that uh, there is no longer that bumper, that guardrail to say, hey, come on, course correct. Like now you're an adult. Yeah. Do you think, uh, what percentage would you say of the protesters there are, what you're describing, like radical leftist nonsense versus human rights for the Palestinian people, let's have a ceasefire, uh, and, and we think Israel has a right to exist, release to hostages. Because there's a distinction there. I just don't know how broad, because... My Palestinian friends tend to be more on that, like, hey, like, man, the, you know, even if they use language like the occupation and open sure. air prison, they're, they're they're less about like Israel doesn't have a right to exist as much as like, hey, we want liberation for our people. Right. Can let's work towards right progression. It sucks that civilians are being killed, even if they're being used as human shields by Hamas. That's terrible. What percentage would you say is like that? More of like a moderate pro Palestinian position versus like a I fringe. Mean, uh, the the encampments yeah. that we have been taking a stand against yeah. uh, do not all, have all do not have one single moderate voice. Really. You know, here, here's the reality, dude. Okay, if I told you, yo, Ruslan, we having a protest uh, a mile down the street, uh, uh, pro-Israel, man, uh, and you know what, dude, we are going to actually do a sit-in mm-hmm. at the uh, mayor's office, and we're not going to leave for three weeks, mm-hmm. and we want you to come join this. And by the way, Ruslan, when you show up, we're going to be holding signs that say, um, murder your elected officials, uh, burn innocent children to death. Mm. And you show up at that rally and you sit with me in your tent in the mayor's office for three weeks and occupy that, you're not a moderate. You're radicalized. You're radicalized. That's good. So my point is like, yeah, I think there are common sense voices on the other side who I would go, absolutely. Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, people would probably say, hey, yeah, I wish, you know, uh, Gaza wasn't dominated by 
you know, Hamas militants, yeah, two-state solution would be something that we would prefer. Hey, we want to work towards that. Hey, we're not saying Israel doesn't have a right to exist, but we're also saying the Palestinians, you know, uh, have a right to exist. And, and those two things can fit within the same Venn diagram with a lot of overlap. And yeah. we want to work towards that. Common sense, sensible voices, 100%. Don't have a problem with those guys. I might disagree with their uh, what I would call political roadmap on how to make that happen. Sure. Uh, I think personally a two-state solution is untenable. I don't think that will ever happen. And I think the more time that we spend talking about that is just wasted breath. Uh, but, you know, political roadmap may differ, but I'd have no problem sitting across from a Palestinian right now and chopping it up about going, hey, how do we figure out how to forge peace, move forward? You've got your worldview. I've got mine. Where do we meet in the middle? Blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. On these college university campuses with these encampments, yeah. there is not one moderate voice. Yeah. If you are standing next to somebody holding a sign sa that says, put Jews in the oven, and you've sat in their camp with a tent next to them for three weeks, you can lie that you're a moderate. Yeah, no, you you're, can pretend yeah. you're a moderate, <laughs> you're far gone, but you're dude. not. You're a demonic, yeah. radicalized individual. That's good. How does this end? How do you think uh, this all this end? You think, you think uh, Israel goes in, gets rid of the last bit of Hamas, and then there's some kind of world community that helps rebuild Gaza. W where do you think this all goes? How I hope this ends... Uh, which, you know, not sure if it will, probably pie in the sky, but what I'd love the international community to do is to put pressure on Egypt to open their borders mm. uh, and in doing so create safe, safe passage for people who want to resettle. In Egypt? Mm -hmm. Oh, so like, oh, that's, yeah, that's, that's, a, that's kind yep. of crazy. So what yep. happens to those folks that have been there for generations? Well, the people who want to be there can stay there. Can but, stay in Gaza. But most of the people don't want to stay there. They don't want to be. I mean, Hamas... I mean, they just had a video of this that came out two days ago. Hamas is murdering their own people for taking foreign aid when it gets dropped off by helicopters, you know, because, of course, Hamas this is, is doing all this that. This is documented? Oh, yeah. I mean, the videos are all over Twitter. Uh, just the other day, they had a bunch of Hamas soldiers in the back of a pickup, and they were executing, it was either two or three young men who uh, they uh, uh, accused of uh, taking aid without first running it past the, um, you know, Hamas officials. Uh, uh, type thing. But also another documented thing that happened um, when Israel first began their invasion, when citizens began to evacuate, mm -hmm. Hamas and their soldiers lined up and were executing their own citizens in the street. Why? Mm. Because they wanted civilians to stay in place, mm. to be used as cannon fodder, mm -hmm. so that the international community would take the side of the Palestinian resistance because of the <laughs> damage to uh, and the death of innocent people. So, you know, when I talk about uh, opening up the borders and giving people the ability to resettle. What I'm not talking about is forcing people from land that they want to stay on. What I'm talking about is uh, creating a, a passageway where people can safely resettle away from the affiliation and the proximity to the Hamas and Hezbollah terrorist influenced leaders who have dominated the landscape uh, of the Gaza Strip, you know, since, you know, 2004, 2007, whenever it was when Israel pulled out. And so, um, you know, but it's interesting, all of the Muslim nations that surround Israel, what have they done? Close their borders. Yeah. Why? Because even they don't want to mess with the crazy. Yeah. So to me, well, I go, the international community has got to come in, got to figure out safe passageway. Uh, but the idea of a two-state solution is not tenable. Yeah. People who are Hamas affiliated, who are Hamas extremists, uh, must be in no uncertain terms eliminated. Uh, people who are peaceful uh, and moderate Arabs, whether they live in Gaza or whether they live in the West Bank or all across Israel, need to come together and forge a better future for their children. The Israeli government is more than interested to make that happen, but the, the, the conversation has been dominated by radicals. Until you deal with the issue of Islamic radicalization, all you're doing is resetting the clock mm. until the next time this happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think that's going to happen in Egypt because I, I did a pretty deep dive on like the, 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 the right. political situation in Egypt is right. a mess. So I don't think they're going to open up their borders. If Egypt doesn't open up their borders, what do you see happening? Yeah, I mean, I think Israel uh, and the IDF finishes the job in Gaza. I know they're moving into, I think it's pronounced Rafa. Rafa or yeah. uh, uh, so Southernmost city. Southernmost. They've already secured the primary border crossing between Egypt and mm -hmm. uh, Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, almost the entirety of the Gaza Strip is now under some sort of you know authority or control uh, of uh, the Israeli government. And by the way, it was prior as well. And part of the peace agreement in the early 2000s was that Israel would pull out and say, hey, listen, y'all want to have this place and you want to have democratic elections that weren't very democratic and be self-governing, be my guest. 
And uh, of course, you know, Hamas rose to power and, and, and after they got power, there was never an election sure. since. Um, so Israel has to finish the job. I think once they finish the job, uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure from the international community to forge a two-state solution. However, um, all of the major money funders behind this militant, you know, extremist arm within within Gaza uh, are the ones who are not in favor of. And in fact, that got admitted by Iran through back-channel communication that became public that the reason why the October 7th attacks happened was because Saudi Arabia was about to normalize relations right. with Israel. Right. So they are against the normalization of Jewish-Arab relationship because they benefit from a destabilized Middle East, right? Yeah. So um, I don't think a two-state solution is tenable. I, I think that what could happen is that Gaza, as we know it, is is to the best of their ability, cleared out from radicals. And maybe similar to, because I know you've been to Israel, similar to Temple Mount, mm -hmm. where they have basically a multilateral national Status agreement, quo. Jordanians, yeah. Saudis, Israelis, who all manage it together. Mm. I could maybe see the international community coming together and having like a trilateral management of Gaza mm -hmm. where they recognize it almost like the America, uh, uh, like, like states in America recognize Indian reservations. Mm -hmm. It's like pseudo sovereign, but not really, mm -hmm. but it has some sort of, of trilateral oversight so that um, there can be multiple nations held ac accountable if radicalization continues to happen. Sure. So yeah. I think that's more practical. Yeah, no, that's good. I mean, that's still, that's there's a glimmer of hope there, you know, because the Temple Mount, no one's really happy about that, but at least there's not. But everybody's kind of unhappy equally. Well, so everyone's it, on a, yeah, yeah, it yeah. creates this dynamic tension. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thank you so much for checking out the video. Comment down below and let me know what you think. And be sure to check out this video that YouTube is recommending just for you. Let me know if they nailed it. All right? I'll see you over there. Peace.